Welcome to the Sakonic L858D RTGX for Godox Flashpoint Quick Start Video. In this video, we will review the installation of the transmitter module and walk you through each radio triggering mode, including HSS and best practices for using your L858DU Speedmaster. First, let's start with connecting your meter to DTS software and making sure you have the most recent firmware. It is recommended that you uninstall your current DTS software prior to installing the updated version available at Sakonic.com. Remove the battery door and connector cover from the connector pins and insert the module in the back of the meter. Power on the meter and you should see the Godox logo on the bottom, signifying that the module has been properly installed. Next, select your desired measuring mode. The Godox radio trigger will be active in these four measuring modes. Radio triggering flash mode. This is the basic wireless triggering mode and should be used for basic lighting setups. Radio triggering multiple cumulative flash mode. This mode is used when you want to meter multiple flashes for the same exposure often used by still-life photographers to build up the depth of field. HSS High Speed Synchro Flash Radio Triggering Mode This mode is used when metering lights using HSS. Flash Duration Analysis Radio Triggering Mode This mode is used to measure and graph the flash duration of strobe lighting. Let's take a walk around the radio triggering flash mode. First, let's set the channel. Select the wrench icon to enter the toolbox and go to the second page. Next, select your channel 1 to 32. Then select your group, either A through F or 0 through 9. A, B, C, D, and E will be displayed initially and by highlighting one and then selecting it again. You can change it to any of 16 groups, either A through F or 0 through 9. And if you want all groups to fire, simply select All. If you are using a wireless ID, you can set your wireless ID by selecting Wrench icon again and going to the second page. Then selecting Wireless ID and entering your Wireless ID. If your lights do not have a Wireless ID function, select Off. Press OK to get back to the measuring screen. Before we get into power control, there is something important to know about how the Godox radio system works. First, make sure your Godox flash is in manual mode instead of TTL or multi, and that you have the HSS enabled on your flash and trigger if you plan to use HSS mode. Also, set zoom setting of speed lights to M, manual, instead of A, auto. The transmitter, whether it is in our meter or on your camera, works two different ways. If you do not make an adjustment, then the strobe will fire at whatever setting it was last set at and the transmitter will simply send a fire signal. But if you make a change in power on the meter or the transmitter, that change in power will change the power of your light. For example, if your light is set to 1 32nd power and you power on your meter and fire the light from the meter, it will stay at 1 32nd power. If you go to the power control screen and change the power of a single group or all your lights together, now the power of your lights will be reset to the power shown on the L858D display. And now, if you select any of the groups, you can see the power the light is at and adjust it up and down. When you go back to your camera, if you don't make any adjustments on your transmitter, then your power settings will not change to what is displayed on the transmitter. To guarantee there is no change, you can go into your Godox or Flashpoint transmitter and select Menu. Then scroll down to Shoot and select APP. This will turn your transmitter into a dummy transmitter that is incapable of changing the power of your lights, but will only trigger them. 
The second option is to change the settings on your camera to the power settings you adjusted on the meter. Power control. So now let's dive into the power control screen. While in any of the modes, select the power control menu icon. The large F number will show the last measured reading. To the right of it is the button to exit back to the main measuring screen. Then you have the groups. Once you select a group, only that group will fire. You can change the group assigned to one of five locations by tapping it again while it's selected. You can adjust the power of an individual group by tapping the minus or plus buttons. A long press will adjust the power by one stop and a short press by one tenth of a stop. This will set the power of the light or lights on that group to the power setting shown. The f-stop above the group is the last measured value of that group. If you press all, you can fire all your groups, as well as change the power of them all together. To the left of the all button is the modeling light on and off switch. And to the right of the all button is the modeling light power control switch. Once pressed, the screen will change color and you can power the modeling lights up and down as well. These power control settings remain the same for all the wireless flash triggering modes. Now let's discuss the radio triggering multiple cumulative flash mode. This mode is used when you need multiple flashes to get to your desired f-stop often used by still-life photographers using extremely high apertures mixed with bellows extensions to build up exposure. When in the multi-mode, you will see MLT along with the flash count on the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Every time you fire a flash, you will see the flash count go up as well as the f-stop change in order to reflect the cumulative effect of the number of flashes you have fired. To reset the count, simply press the memory button. The power control screen and modeling lamp power control screen work as described in the power control chapter and do not show the cumulative effect of your flashes. Next, let's discuss HSS High Speed Synchro Flash Radio Triggering Mode. This mode is available with new RTGX transmitter only, not available with other brands' transmitters. First, make sure that you have the HSS setting enabled on your flash and trigger if you plan to use HSS mode. Next, set your shutter speed and ISO and simply fire your flash. The meter will give you the exposure value for HSS. The power control screen works as described in the power control chapter. It will continue to trigger your lights using HSS. Next, let's discuss the flash duration analysis radio triggering mode. This mode enables you to wirelessly trigger your Godox flash and measure its f-stop, flash duration time, and graph of flash waveform for input ISO sensitivity and shutter speed. First, make sure you have the proper T value set depending on if you want to measure. T.1 and T.5 are most commonly referenced by lighting manufacturers. T.1 is more closely related to the shutter speed of your camera, but not exact. To select your T value, go to the toolbox, go to the next page and select Flash Duration Analysis T value. Here you can select T.1 to T.9. We will keep the meter set to T.1, the default value given on Select Godox Flashes, then select OK. You will see three values. First, the flash duration of the light you are measuring. Then you will see either the milliseconds denoted by MS or microseconds denoted by US. Then below this, you will see the aperture value. If the aperture value shows under in yellow, it means your set shutter speed is faster than your flash duration and the exposure cannot be accurately measured. You will have to lower your shutter speed until it's below the flash duration of your camera. 
Please note that while in flash duration mode, any value given to a shutter speed higher than your camera's sync speed is theoretical and not HSS. It is showing the value if your camera had a normal flash sync speed that was equal or higher. While in this mode, you can also tap the screen to see a graph of your flash duration if you would like to study its curve. For instance, some manufacturers quote their flash duration based upon T.5, and many photographers like to see how much flash power shows below the T.5 line in order to know if there is light below this point that could affect their exposure. The power control screen and modeling lamp power control screen work as described in the power control chapter. Thank you for watching. This completes the tour of the Sekonic L858DU Quick Start video. Please see the description below for chapter times if you feel you need to rewatch any section.